We're here today to deliver a letter to Her Majesty's Treasury, who have a scheme recently announced called the UK Guarantee Scheme, which is £33 billion of guarantees of loans, a very sizeable chunk of taxpayers' money to private developers of infrastructure projects. They have a short list of pre-qualified projects, uh, among which three are big biomass projects, burning foreign trees to create UK electricity. Egbro, which is a conversion of an old, inefficient coal power station to biomass, would burn, if fully converted, 16 million tonnes of trees a year. A dedicated power station in Avonmouth, which would burn 1 million, and Tilbury Green Energy, which would burn about 300,000 tonnes of virgin biomass. It destroys important ecosystems in foreign countries, which we would not be allowed to be harvesting and clear-cutting if it was growing in this country. This is not the way forward. It's worse for climate change than burning fossil fuels. We know that the government's own research has shown that uh, burning trees can actually be worse for the climate than uh, fossil fuels. Now we're seeing Treasury supporting big polluting power stations like Drax, supporting them with money for adding trees to the coal they are already burning, trees that have been imported from overseas, which is threatening forests in North America and other places. The co-firing is really just a way to try and prevent the UK from breaching the very generous limits it set itself. So it's a complete con, really, this idea of, of co-firing. It's also extremely wasteful because it burns wood at 35% of efficiency. I mean, to take hardwood from the United States and then burn it at 35% efficiency, what kind of abuse is that? A lot of these projects are not succeeding in getting upfront investment despite the fact that there's a very generous subsidy scheme for bioenergy in this country. They're not getting off the ground, so this is a way of kick-starting these industries, giving some security to private investors to invest in these companies. When you're burning biomass, whether it's waste wood and green waste, food waste, or virgin biomass pulp, um, it's still going to have an impact in terms of CO2 emissions. Um, but in waste incineration, that is totally ignored. Quite a lot of waste going into waste incinerators is deemed organic. In other words, it can be wood. It's more likely to be waste wood and cardboard and a certain amount of green waste. And even though green waste and food waste is increasingly being collected by councils, still a lot is fed into incinerators. And the government currently regards that as being carbon neutral, even though clearly it's not really. The official government line is that they will not acknowledge that there are any serious health risks to residents living near waste incinerators. They think that they are clean enough um, not to pose a threat to the general public. Um, we think that the jury is still out on that, uh, that the, basically the health issues are unresolved. Um, uh, and of course any health impacts are going to be very long term and quite difficult to assess. And very little research is being done. It seems extraordinary to me that the government should be offering loan guarantees for something that's completely non-renewable and completely unsustainable. What we should be doing, instead of grabbing land from people and turning land for food into land for fuel, and instead of getting people involved in industrial agriculture, this is just one other way of doing that, we should be trying to reduce demand, to reduce consumption. If we invested in demand reduction, then we would reduce the cost of people's bills, we would reduce the need for the infrastructure, and we would reduce the need to burn a feedstock. So we would hit three really important climate change and future sustainability targets if we invested in conservation in saving. Unless developed, so-called developed countries, start doing that, we're laying up even more trouble for ourselves because the emerging middle classes of other countries are going to say, we want this same energy-dense lifestyle, and then we really are going to be finished. The impact of China on forests is already enormous. It's time that the British government not only looked to its own policy, but thought about the terrible example it's setting to the rest of the world by acting in this manner. Clearly this money could be much better spent supporting uh, community-owned, sustainable, renewable energy, which would benefit communities as well as the climate. It's something that we are seeing happening uh, all over Europe. Um, in, in Germany, there's, there's 
lots of that happening. Um, you know, it could, it could happen here with, with the right uh, sort of uh, support. We could invest in real, genuine, renewable energy uh, that doesn't involve burning. Uh, we have the best wind um, potential in Europe. Solar can play a very big part. We shouldn't be investing in something that is worse in many cases than burning the coal.